So if you couldn't tell by now, Blender is pretty hard to use. But hopefully we're gonna make that easier in today's video. I see so many tutorials that just don't explain things properly and just aren't that helpful. So I'm changing things up for today's video. I'm gonna make a model with you guys today, but the catch is I'm not gonna cut up any of the footage. It's just gonna be 20 minutes of raw footage of me modeling, explaining what I'm doing, showing you guys how to do it, and showing every little detail of the process. And by the end of it, you guys are all gonna be pros at Blender. So enjoy. All right, so we're here in Blender, and I think we're going to be making a snare drum today. So real quick, I'm going to add in my reference image. By doing that, uh, just press numpad once to go to a 2D view. Now shift A, uh, image, and reference, then it's going to open up the file explorer, and you just find your picture. All right, sweet, it imported. Uh, I don't, I'm not going to model like the sticks up here, just the main drum. So yeah, let's get started. All right, I'm going to move it back, uh, maybe just change the size, make sure it fits well in the viewport. And already I can see it's mostly a cylindrical shape. So I'm gonna add in a cylinder, just shift A and cylinder. Now I'm gonna go down to this bottom menu and change the vertices to about 20, as 32 is just too many. Actually, no, I forgot. So there's eight, like these little tuning lugs on a snare drum. So I'm realizing if I'm gonna have those separated evenly, I'm probably gonna wanna have a number of faces that's divisible by eight. So let's actually take this to 24. Yeah, that's gonna be a little bit easier. Hey, a numpad one for a 2D view, and let's scale it to about maybe there for snare drum size. And we've got these little loops, hoops, whatever you wanna call them on the outside to, to create. So yeah, let's, let's do those first. So I think I'm just gonna tap into edit mode. I'm gonna inset this top face by pressing I. And... Let's see, maybe about there. Yeah, then I'm gonna get, I'm gonna hold down Alt to ring select this group of faces. I'm gonna press Shift D to duplicate them, and right click to reset the position. G and Z to move them up, and S to scale them out a little bit. And you just G Z to move it down a little bit as well. Then I'm just gonna select all these top faces. Right click and hit dissolve faces because we don't need those separated anymore. And now we've got something to work with for the hoops. So, back to 2D view. Actually, no, they gotta be top view for this. Uh, scale them so they're just inside the drum, like that, since they do overlap. Then it looks like we come in a little bit, out, and then in again. Or actually, we can just do uh, one extrusion with that. So bring these down, extrude up about here, and now, uh, I pressed, sorry, I forgot, forgot to tell you guys, press E to extrude that. Now we can go over to this loop cut tool, uh, left click to make one cut across right there. Uh, now we can press control B, bevel, turn those into faces, about there, back to face select up here. Now we can just hit extrude along normals, bring them out just a tiny bit, and S and Z to scale them way down. Mm, now they need to be a little bit longer, so let's grab these bottom faces, alt click, so ring select those, and bring you down, yeah, like that. Uh, that's a lot better. Yeah, now same thing on the bottom. So what we're gonna do is ring select all these faces again, just by pressing Alt and left clicking. Oh, wrong ring. I'm uh, gonna go into wireframe to make sure I've selected them all. G, just to see that they're all moving. Control Z to undo that. Okay, back to solid view. Uh, they look pretty good. So we're gonna right click, hit separate selection. So now the ring is just a separate mesh from the cylinder. Back to 2D view. Now we're gonna use a mirror modifier to mirror it across the uh, X axis looks like. I can already tell the origin point is in the very center of the viewport, which means it's going to uh, mirror smoothly. Otherwise you can just hit control A and apply all transformations to reset it, but mine was already reset. Just go over to modifiers, add modifier and mirror. Now just play with the axis till it looks good. Not that one, not that one. Looks like Z is gonna work. Make sure it looks pretty even. Yeah, that's, that's good. So we can apply that there. Now, one thing I wanna fix already is you can tell, you can see all the lines of the drum and they're not there in the picture. So to do that, we're just gonna right click, shade smooth, go over to object data, normals, and we're going to auto smooth it. Nice, it looks much better. And there's a slight curve at the top of the drum right there. So I'm gonna grab this top face, I to inset it, and then ever so slightly 
We're just gonna press G and Z and move it up a tiny bit. Yeah, it's that's not very noticeable. Let's go a little bit more. About there. Yeah, that's better. Okay, so we've got our hoops done. Uh, the drum looks pretty solid, and actually, you know, let's let's shade those hoops smooth as well. Yeah, that's that looks a lot better. Okay, then the only other thing I'm noticing is actually these. I should have noticed this before mirroring it, but the bottom, the inside bit of these hoops, as you can see by the picture, is not as uh, it's not sticking out as much as the top. So I should bring those in just a little bit. Select those. Now I can press S and Z and bring those in and actually I like that S and yeah let's bring them in this way I don't think that's the way the picture goes but I like the way that looks All right, much better now it looks like we've got these little lugs to make okay so I'm gonna be dealing with a new mesh to make those so we're just gonna select everything and hit H to hide it just like that numpad 1 for a 2d view now we're gonna hit shift A and we're going to add a cube so you can see these are in a pretty like tall, straightforward shape, and obviously we have a cube. So to fix that, I'm gonna press S, Shift, and Z. And what this does is it's scaling on every axis except the Z. So it's not, is, let me just go to a side view so you can see. Uh, it's not moving up and down at all, it's only moving the sides of the cube. So by doing that, we can just scale it to a nice, about well, rectangle shape right there, a little bit more, yeah. Then, it uh, looks like we have some slight little bevels around the curves. Those are super easy to make. Uh, we just select all those edges, just like that. Now we press Control B, and we give them a solid little bevel. Uh, it doesn't look quite straight, so let's grab a couple of those faces. We just press S and X, bring them in. Mm, actually, no, I don't like that bevel. It was too much. Let's go a little bit less. Just control Z to undo everything. Mm. Oh, it's hard to match that picture. About, about there, I'd say. Okay, we'll grab those edges again. Now S and X, move them in. Uh, yeah, I like that better. That's that'll do. Okay. Now you'll notice we have this little, little bit like sort of cut out of the cube. So sort of, I, just because it's cut out, I'm just turning to boolean modifiers. So we're going to add in another cube with shift A, and we're going to scale it so that this cube is essentially covering what would be the hole in this cube. So actually we're going to want to center it, just alting G to move it to the origin point, which is already at the center. Uh, looks like the hole is going to be right there. So we want to go about, about there, SZ, uh, just trying to match the picture here. I think that's gonna that's gonna look pretty good. Okay, now we will be sure that the cube is covering that spot on all dimensions. Now some magic right here. We're gonna select the base object, which in this case is a little hoop bit. Uh, add a modifier, boolean modifier. Now using this eyedropper, we're gonna select the cube out here, and it's just gonna eat away their overlapping space. So you're safe to delete the cube after you apply the modifier, and the space that was overlapping them is just gonna be gone. Now, I'm going to go back into edit mode and just smooth these curves out a little bit. So we'll take the inside ones, just go SZ. You can see just dragging them in, just curving that space a little bit. Now on the outside, there's a very, very slight curve, I think. And I want to see if I can recreate that. Just a loop cut right there in G and X. Bring you out a bit, and maybe Control B. Almost not even noticeable. And then just shade smooth and auto smooth them again. Mm, actually, you can see there's a couple dark spots there, so we're just going to turn the angle down a little bit till those go away. Not even auto smoothing it at that point. Alright, we'll live with them, just see how it looks with the rest of the mesh. Now we have these little cylindric parts coming out of this main, I don't know what you call it, tuning lug thing. So let's make those. Shift A, cylinder. Now since these are smaller parts of the mesh, you're not really going to notice them. They can have a lot less vertices, like probably even eight. Uh, since you don't want to take up extra geometry if you don't have to, just lags your viewport. So, shade smooth, auto smooth, crank up the angle, and you can't even tell that they have eight vertices. So we're going to scale you in. GZ, uh, they're pretty small up there, like, yeah, about that size. Wow. And I'm just going to bring you up like that. 
And now there's also going to be this little rectangular panel, I guess, that's coming out parallel to our little clamps here. So we're going to add in another cube for that. It just seems like the easiest mesh to turn to. And now I'm just going to scale it to roughly be the size that we want. S, Z, S, X. Looks like it's good. I'm going to go numpad 7 for a top 2D view. And we're going to make it just shy yeah, of the clamp right there. Scale it down a little bit further. And that looks about the same as the reference image. Now let's just bring these two sides in and down. Uh, they're just wider than the uh, outside of that. So let's go numpad 3 for the alternate side 2D view. And we'll go just wider than our clamp right there. And I think this whole bit is a little bit too high. So let's go down like that. Now these bits get extruded down it looks like. So we'll give them a little extrusion. Move them down. Hmm. Rotate them a little as well. It's like RX maybe. Is that 90? Yeah. On the same side, we'll do RX negative 90. Now we'll take both of these and we want to scale them individually. So we'll, on this little bit up here, we'll hit individual origins and SX, or sorry, SY. And yes, just like that. Move you up a little bit. A little bit more. Mm, that looks pretty good. We just want to take this face as well. Move it up. SY. Okay, I like that. Take you, scale shift Z just a little bit. Take you down. Okay. I think I like that. Now we just have to do this little bit poking out at the top. So we'll grab the top face of this. Let's just go shift D, GZ, scale it way up. Um. Alt select these middle faces for this little extruded bit here. Just I to inset only a little bit. Extrude along normals. Oh, yeah, you can see what happens if you try to extrude along normals when you still have uh, individual origins. Don't want that. So we're just going to go back to median point, and you can see it's normal now. Right, let's scale that down, curve it out a little bit. Very nice. Um, oh, I should show that. Yeah, if you select one face and hit Control L. It'll select all linked faces as well. Just GZ, bring you down to right there. And that's pretty close to the picture. That's pretty dang close. Okay, uh, let's take you, join you together. And now we're gonna mirror it to the other side of our clamp. So, set origin to geometry. Oh, sorry, not geometry, to 3D cursor. So the origin is this little golden point here. I should have, should have explained this earlier, but you can set it to different points in the viewport, and that's just where all operations of the object happen around. You see, if I rotate, it happens around the origin. If I scale it, it happens around the origin. It's, you want Origin is important, basically, especially for mirror modifiers. So we want to be sure it's in the dead center of the viewport because we're mirroring it about the center. So you're just going to give it a nice little mirror modifier. That's with the axis, and it looks like Z is going to do us well. Apply all those transformations real quick, and that looks pretty even. So we'll apply that, grab these two faces, and we will join them. Not faces, objects. Uh, shade Smooth got a little messed up since we had two different angles on two different objects. Just turn this up till we get smooth lines there. Sweet! Okay, we have our bracket, and we have, unhide these up here, our snare drum. So now we have to get the brackets evenly spaced about the whole drum. I'm going to try a couple different methods to do this since uh, there's not just one that works. There's multiple, obviously, because we're using Blender. So scale them to... That looks pretty good. Let's go RZ negative... Oh, RZ positive 90. Turn it inward to the mesh like that. Alt G, G Y. Okay, so they're going to be lined up sort of like that. Actually, no. We want them lined up not against like a vertex, but against a flat face. So, try to we gave this thing 24 faces. We have to rotate it exactly half of one of those faces. So it's like, what, 24 divided by 360? Oh, uh, I think that's, what, 15? Let me try that. RZ 15. Okay, that's exactly one degree. So we have to go RZ 7.5, and that's exactly one face. So now these guys are lined up with solid faces. There we go. 
Oh, let's make him look nice and pretty. Oh, we don't want an ugly looking snare drum, do we? Okay. SZ. Mm. No, you know, I like that. I do like that. Actually, I take that back. I don't like that. The clamp isn't touching the drum. Okay, this guy, uh, just by basic engineering, has to be touching the drum. That looks better. Not quite, really, not quite what the reference image had, but hey, I'd rather be correct. Okay, now let's get this around the entire drum. The easiest way to get these all around the edges is all we're gonna do, numpad seven, set the origin to the 3D cursor. Now we can just mirror it over to the other side like that, apply it, then just shifty, RZ 90, grab all these, shifty, RZ 45. Now they should all be, yep, lined up flush with the faces looking gorgeous and beautiful sweet ah so it's a nice pretty simple snare drum i guess we can do some basic colors real quick just gonna click on the main shell uh new material new base color will make you a nice red go to material preview mode to see those juicy colors uh let's join all these metal pieces because they're all going to be the same color new material and we'll make you guys nice and gray and let's give you a white head up top because that's typical for snare drums and just assign that is that all white yeah it is sweet and we'll probably want to do the same with the bottom head let's just assign that material after selecting it and i think we are just about done now so this is essentially my modeling process just go through thump go through something step by step, copy the reference image. Uh, yeah, just use the reference image for colors as well. Make things look nice. And I just realized I forgot to shade this whole thing smooth. So let's turn up that angle a little bit. And there we go. Now these little lugs are flat. Hey, we're done with this snare drum. Uh, if you guys want, I could send a download link for it if you want to play around with it, try to remake it for yourself. But yeah, that's my modeling process. Uh, it should get you pretty far every time you try. And hopefully y'all learned something from this video. Oh, well, see you later.